The market for NFTs, non-fungible tokens for digitized art, has seen a bit of a drop between March and June. According to a website nonfungible.com, NFT art units uh, sold uh, down about 58%. The sales volume in dollars is down about 80% from March levels. And active market wallets are down about 54%. Still, uh, NFT markets for digitized art has room for growth and is yielding talent uh, across the globe. In fact, one of those talented artists is here in Nigeria joining us to discuss further about the NFT space is Oladakpo Ogunjobi, who goes by the alias Overtour. Did I, did I pronounce that right? Overtour? Fantastic. You're very welcome to the show. Uh, first of all, help our viewers um, define NFTs. What are NFTs? NFTs are basically non-fungible tokens. So these are tokens registered on the blockchain, like smart contracts. These tokens can be stolen, damaged, or forged. That's the physical ones can be stolen, damaged, yes, or forged. Right, yes, okay. but the ones on the digital platform cannot be stolen, damaged, or forged. So um, it, gives, it gives creatives or creators the, the belief that whatever they are uploading or whatever they are selling remains that way for life mm. on the blockchain. Okay, so what is the advantage of transitioning from physical arts to art yeah, in the digital realm. Yeah, so for the most part, it's not really a transition. So okay. like they work hand in hand, they could work hand in hand. So for example, I can NFT in my car, for an example, I can tokenize my car and sell it as an NFT. So, so instead of me selling my car, you know, with the normal bank transfer or having to create a document, once I create a token of that car, that's for example, putting the plate numbers, the kind of tires and all the, the specific, the details, Someone can get that NFT and the person that has the right to this card. So, so physical and digital could work together smoothly without stress. Okay, and so in that case, there's no break between there no break. physical assets. There's like, no case of saying we're leaving physical art leaving. behind. No, no, no. And the digital they art could, is still, is still there. work together. Okay, great stuff. Um, you've, uh, I think uh, you're an artist here. You've used something called systemic... Um, abstract imaging. Systemic abstract imaging. Yes. Yeah, well, what, what, how do you define that? Um, well, this is basically creating abstract works on the digital space using Photoshop, After Effects, and softwares that make artists and produce stuff. So like, it's like just mixing up images and at the end of the day, telling a story. Mm. Just like an abstract painter, buying oil and splashing it on the canvas, doing those stuff, then at the end of the day, he has a physical art piece that may look like something and goes with the title and stuff. But on the digital platform, we, what, what I've been able to do is to do that abstract thing, but now with the digital softwares and stuff. Okay, and, you know, is this essentially computer programming? Is that, is that where, what it is? Where computer programming comes in, for my works, is augmented reality. Now this requires a software, this requires some programming, you know, for, for you to be able to experience or for the artist to be able to achieve that magic in quote where you use your smartphone or smart device, you know, put it in front of a piece, then something else happens. So that particular thing is augmented reality and that is where the tech part of programming comes into play. Aha, perfect. Okay, so if that's the case, how much, how much knowledge of... An artist who wants to trans, well, I'm using the word transition, yeah. forgive me. If you're going from, you know, the physical arts on uh, a canvas, and now you're going to NFTs and digital, how, how much programming knowledge do you have to have to be able to do what we're just displaying on the screen there? Well, it, 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 depending on the amount of time, you're really willing to give to Google, right? So if you're on Google for a good amount of time, you'll be able to get something out of it. It's, it's because it's like 21st century, they made things so easy. So with Google typing a few things, you get something out of it. But it took me four years, right? Because like Whoa, yeah, four years. Four years That's to actually get this done. Essentially like going to school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I started I started, I started way back in school. So it took me four years to finally figure it out. But I believe that the next person should, should take a shorter time because these are things I've done and it's like there's a blueprint right now to work with. Okay. Yeah, so. All right, so your work is, I think one platform is Rarible. Yes. The other is? OpenSea. OpenSea. So how important are these platforms for well, displaying these? Because, because it's the blockchain, right? So once you upload a particular piece on a platform, you can't take it out. You can't change your mind, especially when it's sold. So, so like I decided OpenSea because OpenSea is really open. It's the largest mark, NFT marketplace in the world. And, and what they offer is completely different from what, for example, Mintable or Rarible offers as creators. So I, I took that decision to actually work with OpenSea because I know that that's where I want to be for a long time. 
Okay, and um, this is the, the key question here. Um, how do you value NFTs? You have what? Open your project is called the Eleven Eleven. The Eleven Eleven project. Fine. Yes. Now, I guess that that's that's the, that's the, that's the debate. How, how do you assign value to these NFTs? Because I guess it's based on what the market feels they are they are due. So how how do you how are you? Because okay. I know you're you're selling some for you're playing on a theme of one eleven. Yes, so yes, I'm playing on dollars, theme, exactly. So that June eleven. Okay, so, 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 so prior to the eleven eleven project, I, I valued my work based on. You know what collectors are saying, what viewers are saying, what buyers are saying. But moving to the eleven eleven project, strictly we decided to value our works using the number eleven eleven. Okay. So for example, when we started selling our prints, we're selling for one hundred and eleven dollars ten cents, which made a lot of sense. So because we wanted people to be able to afford them, and they were in a limited edition of one thousand one hundred and eleven too. So it kind of made sense overall. But when we went to the NFT space, we decided to make it 11 limited edition, and now we're selling one edition for 1.11 Ethereum. Okay. Yeah. And so, so this is based. This is using. Um, um, it's based on the Ethereum platform. It's based on right? the Ethereum platform. What other use cases? I think there's uh, the Ethereum platform. There's also um, uh, the Ethereum platform beyond what it is that you're NFTs. doing. It's a, it's a, a between, beyond NFTs. The Ethereum platform is on the blockchain platform, yes. is it not? Yes. Okay, smart contracts are also another thing you yes. use Ethereum for. Yes. What other use cases are there for Ethereum? No, for the most part, investments, you know, um, transactions, and smart contracts for now. And then, so, and then the NFTs. The NFTs, uh, yeah, the NFTs well. are smart contracts too. Right, If you think about it, yeah, anyway. Okay. So. And so now, the, we saw, you saw the numbers that we put up. I don't know if it's... You, the, the market was e extremely excited over this. There was one particular um, digital art piece that went Beeple, for people. 69 million, right? Dollars, yeah. Right, 69 million dollars. So as you can see now from, and he, he sold his back in, it was either Feb, it was earlier this yeah, year, yeah, was yeah. it not? No, it was March, March 11th. Thank you. Perfect. It was March. So that's why we've put up these numbers since mm -hmm. March. The numbers have kind of come down. Would yes. you say that there was, you know, too much excitement around them, or will they find their level over time? How how do you see I think, sales I, going? I think for because like NFTs, just like anything, is controlled by human feelings. You know, humans putting their money and taking their money out mm. as they will. So it started. It started. It's been announced since 2017. There was this wave in 2021 after the pandemic, and everybody people had a lot of crypto money in their wallets, and mm. they needed to spend it. So artists and organizations took advantage of that. But it doesn't, it doesn't change the fact that even with the drop now, because it's dropping really low, even with the drop now, it doesn't change the fact that in the next 10 years, because we're, we, the artists or creators, we're looking at the big picture. What's, what is, like, what are humans likely to do? Humans don't like stress. NFTs offers less stress for transaction, investment, and all those things. So, yeah, there's a wave, just as everything, based on emotions. It will come back, it will go high. I just got a news, um, Alibaba, Jack Ma, mm -hmm. bought one NFT, I think 111 million dollars as at this morning really it's, yeah and it's just a ridiculous picture of a face now so what we're seeing i guess so this you, you envision a digital future right the central bank of nigeria is looking at exploring digital currencies so is the united states so is china europe is that in line with your vision when you're saying you're looking at big picture for artists yeah, if in, 20, we, in 20 in 2030 yeah. it's digital it's all you're, not, you're targeting not all not right. all not all but for the most part it's digital what are the boundaries to tokenization? Are it, can can I tokenize my phone or yes. tokenize this this day newspaper? You or can tokenize anything you own. So you have to own it to tokenize it. Yes. You can. Okay. So I guess that's the and it's a it's a unique it's a identifier unique on the blockchain that yes. says that it, it has not been um, duplicated in any way. It can't be duplicated in any. Then you think, if you look at people who have art now, where you walk into someone's home, I checked out your Instagram, okay. and there's, there's an image of, I think you're in an art gallery or so, yeah, right? So that as opposed to what we're looking at now, okay. how, how would I display NFTs? Exactly. So in the future, <laughs> um, people will be able to display NFTs like on this screen. Okay. So you walk into someone's house and the, the, the value of that person is what you're seeing on the screen. Okay. You know, these futuristic things where everything is all digital and stuff. Right, in 2030, the value of your wallet, which is public, because mm. it's, 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 the blockchain is public, everybody knows you have these NFTs right. because they can see it in your wallet. So when you, go, when you meet someone, the value of that person really will be determined by whose NFT he has, what NFT has purchased over the decade. We only got like 10 seconds. What's next after the 11.11 project? What do you have next? Um, I'm just going to keep creating art and exploring life. Oladakpo Ogunjobi, who goes by Overture. 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 Thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate Thank you so much. The NFT discussion.